Hey guys, what's going on? Um, today I wanted to talk to you guys about the pandemic, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic that's going on. We are about one year, one and a half months into the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I really want to talk about my experience with it because I, I never, you know, I, I'm, I never had a bad experience. I mean, you know, nothing crazy has happened for me at least, um, which is thankfully, I'm thankful for that. Um, however, um, you know, I've had some friends that have had COVID and stuff and um, uh, but, uh, I also want to talk about my observations between, between that time and now, uh, and, and what my observations have been over, over the course of, you know, the past year, what I've noticed, uh, some of the, and, and just, just my own personal, just my own personal observations, just my own personal, um, experiences that have happened, uh, with COVID, uh, with, with the, with the things that I noticed around around town or, or with friends or with family or anything like that. Right. Um, so I, I'm going to get right into it. I mean, obviously the pandemic is still going on. Uh, we, we are talking about the, you know, we're talking about this and, uh, it, it's a worldwide pandemic. I mean, it's clear, clear, as simple as that. It doesn't just affect the United States. It affects world worldwide. I mean, I know, you know, up in Canada, you know, even though there's, there's, <laughs> not not as many people up there as there are down. I mean, I don't know. Maybe there are more, but apparently it's not as many people up there as are down here. Uh, you know, up in Canada, apparently it's it's gotten bad again in certain regions up there. Um, then you look at a country like India, where where the third where the waves just hit tremendously horribly bad. Um, and, and and you know, my thoughts and prayers go out to them uh, as well as anyone else that's being affected by this. You know, because it's really really insane. Um, all right, so I'm going to back up because. I really want to want to talk about this uh, in more detail, uh, going from month to month. So I'm going to start about January of last year because it was right before the pandemic was made official, and uh, I remember, you know, just just uh, something was wrong. Something felt wrong with me at the time that you know my body just wasn't feeling right. Um, and, and no one really had any idea, uh, you know, what was going on. I don't want to give you the symptoms that I had, but some of the symptoms were pretty gross and, and, and they could have been related to COVID. Um, so it's a possibility that I might've gotten COVID early on, um, and never knew it. And, and that's a strong possibility. Now they don't know, uh, because at the time I was also dealing with the bad neck and I'm still dealing with the bad neck, which I'll get to that probably in sometime later this week about this and what's happening. Um, but uh yeah the um uh so so it was probably about mm, mid january i just wasn't feeling right i think i went over my friend's bob my friend's bob my friend my friend's house his name is bob um he um he uh we i think i went to go watch royal rumble at his house or something and i was you know i wasn't feeling great but i was doing okay and you know i was you know whatever um, apparently his, uh, at the time his wife was, was also starting to get sick as well. And, uh, you know, we didn't know it next weekend. I think it was a week next weekend or weekend after or whatever. It was Super Bowl weekend. And, you know, we just decided to go to his, uh, his parents' house to go watch the Super Bowl instead of going out to any kind of parties or anything like that. We weren't in the mood, like, uh, the, you know, normal the people that would normally have the parties we go to weren't having them. Other people didn't want to go out. They just wanted to, you know, have anti Super Bowl parties, which was you know, kind of silly too. Um, so we just decided, oh, let's just let's let's stay low key. Let's go and watch the Super Bowl here. Uh, and so we went and watched the Super Bowl at his parents' house. And you know, didn't I was I wasn't feeling good, you know, with, with, with the symptoms I had. And then and then about a week later after the Super Bowl, or probably the same week right after the, right after the Super Bowl. Bob got really sick. Like his wife was also sick for a while, um, but he got really sick. And then uh, he actually ended up in a hospital for like four days uh, with uh, what they labeled as, you know, pretty much bad pneumonia where, where they basically, you know, had kept him there for four days. And, you know, they were afraid that he wasn't going to make it. It was that bad. Um, thankfully, he did make it. And, and you know, uh, it was a pretty bad, bad case. And he didn't know if it was COVID or not at the time either. We don't know. Um, you know, but it was pretty bad. They labeled it as pneumonia. And, um, uh, and, and I'm like, man, I'm like, and I'm feeling bad too. And I'm like, I don't know. Uh, at the time too, I was going to a chiropractor and, and they were adjusting my neck and back a lot. And every time, the more they were doing it, the worse I was feeling. So I don't know if I was just sick from something else or sick from the actual, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, chiropractic adjustments. I don't know to this day. All I know is that around 
you know, I, I was feeling horrible, horrible, horrible. I, I even I even rushed to the doctor's, uh, you know, to my doctor's office unannounced, basically saying that, um, yeah, I was taking the the medication that I was on wasn't working, and, and now I'm starting to feel like I did before the medication and something was wrong. Uh, they, they did some tests on me and everything came out okay. Um, they, they, we didn't know anything about COVID at the time, at that point in time. Uh, but, um, you know, and then they had me come back a few, few, probably about March time frame, you know, right when COVID started hitting. Um, so, uh, so, and that was about the time that we started knowing about COVID because that was when, uh, when they started announcing it basically around March time frame. So, uh, so I stopped going to the chiropractor and suddenly my symptoms started getting a little better, uh, you know, compared to what, compared to what I was dealing with in January and February. So like, maybe somebody had COVID and I was going to the chiropractor's office and was spreading it. And then I was getting it. I don't know. Um, or maybe somebody, you know, or maybe those adjustments were giving it to me. I don't know. Or, or giving me something, some kind of bad, bad reaction or something. I don't know. All I know is, you know, I don't want to feel like that ever again. Um, so that being said, uh, okay, much better. That being said, uh, so, uh, I went ahead and, uh, it's about uh, the the week of St. Patrick's Day. Suddenly, things are starting to get canceled, right? So, so that's what's happening. You know, St. Patrick's Day parade canceled. Um, we're we're all we're at these restaurants and and they're talking about oh, you know, the restaurants might close down. We don't know what they're going to do. They might do a whole emergency shutdown of the entire nation, and 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 then not even the state. The entire nation might do a whole emergency shutdown. So. So we made the best out of it that weekend before uh, everything got shut down. Um, we went to, let me see, I went to my favorite local restaurant, which I have not been back to because of my neck issue. Um, I've ordered from them, but I haven't been back to them. They are reopened about a year later, uh, almost a year later, and, and they're doing very well with business, which I'm very happy about. Um, but um, I went to them uh, because I wanted my corned beef and cabbage at the time, and I said, let me get that. Uh, the next, we, next day, I went to my second favorite restaurant, uh, I shouldn't even say second favorite because they both equally just as good, which is like, uh, which is like, uh, you know, uh, a pizza and pasta place that you can sit at the bar at, right? And um, so I went there and, and, you know, I was asking the guy, I go, what are you guys doing? Are you guys closing down? Like, first thing I asked is, you know, because next week was St. Patrick's Day, they were having, um, uh, they usually used to have a sit down dinner. And I was asking him, are you guys going to, oh, not dinner, a sit down breakfast at the bar with the buffet and i asked him i go are you going to do a sit down breakfast a breakfast at the bar buffet because it's in the middle of the week he goes he goes yeah we haven't thought about that you know because it's a week and everything like that and we don't really know what's going on but um yeah so we we're not sure yet we're not really sure and and you know and i asked him i go you know, i heard i heard they might be closing down restaurants do you guys plan on shutting down he goes he goes i don't know he goes i honestly couldn't tell you right now he goes i'm gonna do whatever the state tells us to do and, and that's as simple as that so i mean it's as simple as that um and uh, so they they went ahead and and you know I asked the guy how was business the night before with all the people knowing that restaurants are going to be closed and he goes the guy the guy owner come up to me he goes dude he goes it was insane he goes I I've, I've never been this busy before in my entire life at this bar and it was just it was just insane he goes I'm lucky I had extra staff on that night um, then we went there Saturday and there was nobody there. Um, you know, uh, this only people that were there were like me, my buddy, maybe one other person and an older couple that, you know, old man, uh, just had a heart attack the week before, uh, and then came in at the bar a week later with his wife. And, and unfortunately the old man did pass away the next week, uh, is very sad. Um, we don't know if it's from COVID or from anything else. Uh, I did talk to her, her husband, uh, you know, his wife. Uh, you know, so, uh, and she did say that she blames COVID and everything like that. But, uh, you know, we had a St. Patrick's Day parade in, in the neighborhood that was supposed to happen, completely canceled. Um, we also had, um, we also, you know, so, but, but they left a restaurant open that would typically have St. Patrick's Day and there were no limitations at the time. Uh, so, you know, we went to the restaurant thinking, okay, well, that's cool. We can probably, and it was an Irish restaurant, a complete Irish restaurant on a Sunday. Uh, so we went there and we said, well, let's go there and see what they do. Um, so we went there and they came back and, and, you know, they had a very good thing. There were a lot of people in there, first of all, and we were talking about this. They said, man, this week, the state's going to shut everything down. The nation's going to shut everything down. It's going to be worldwide. Just wait, you know, we're, we're already talking about it. And I'm looking at my phone. I'm like, yeah, I'm reading this and, I, and you're right. Like I'm telling my friend, you're right, dude. 
like all this is probably going to happen starting this week, probably Tuesday, which is St. Patrick's Day. Um, uh, so, you know, but the bar was great. I mean, we all got to sit at the bar. We got to eat there. We got, you know, the, my friends that were drinking had a few drinks there. They had uh, the Irish dancers and Irish singers come in. Uh, it was packed, you know, you know, shoulder to shoulder at the time. Uh, COVID was technically a thing. Uh, I remember sitting at the bar at the restaurant, uh, you know, the one that I went to on Friday. Uh, and I'm, I'm, we're talking about COVID and I'm hearing people cough and stuff like that. Like they're very sick. And even the lady next to me, she was very, very like, she was coughing. And I was like, oh man, I'm like, I hope she doesn't have COVID and hope I don't catch it because I don't need to get sick. I'm already messed up as it is. Um, but as it is, uh, it turns out, you know, she's okay, thankfully. And, and I didn't, you know, I never got sick. No one else that I knew, you know, uh, you know, other than a few friends had COVID, uh, much later on too. Um. Actually, one of my friends had it very early on, right at the beginning, and uh, he felt like death. Like, he basically thought he was going to die. That's how bad it was. Uh, but he survived. Uh, thankfully, he survived. And um, he was the first person that we knew that got COVID. He got very sick. And then we had another friend that got COVID maybe about a month later, you know, or so. But he wasn't doing as bad. Uh, so, but anyway, let me move on to, to what's happening now. Now we're talking about March. You know, March 17th was, was the day that they decided, well, it's St. Patrick's Day. A lot of the bars already shut down and canceled all their events. Everyone, all my friends were mad because they like to go out and do stuff for St. Patrick's Day. Meanwhile, I'm suffering with my neck, and I still suffer with my neck today, trying to get to eat, try to even drive down the street. And and I'm like, well, I'll go join you guys for anything that you're doing, if we're doing anything at home. Uh, thankfully, uh, we did do something at my friend's house for St. Patrick's Day. Um, he he just invited everyone over, COVID or not, right? This was before any masks or anything like that. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we had, we had gotten on some, uh, FaceTimes and Zoom, well, Zoom actually wasn't even a thing at the time, some FaceTimes with, uh, with some folks that had, you know, I iPhones and, uh, you know, people that they would normally meet up with at the bar to like, ah, you know, we need to re redo St. Patrick's Day again and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but, um, you know, thankfully, uh, we were able to watch a couple of live streams. Uh, one of our buddies is an Irish singer. Um, he had a live stream going for him from his own from his own uh, home, so he so he had a lot of people watching, uh, and then also the Dropkick Murphys had a live stream. Now now that day on St. Patrick's Day, they announced that curfew was I believe at ten o'clock. I think it was. They said ten o'clock, and they said what we want we don't want anyone on the roads at ten o'clock. We don't want we don't want any any restaurants or fast food places or anything like that open past ten o'clock. Everything's got to shut down. Um, so they actually announced a curfew and then they said, you know, essential businesses though. And they started labeling essential businesses, which is like gas and, and so, you know, say, say like, say like a, like a McDonald's, uh, was considered an essential business. You know, they, they could stay open after this, but they had to have a curfew at 10 o'clock at the moment. And, and they didn't want, you know, people going out, but like restaurants and bars and stuff like that had to shut down. They absolutely had to shut down. Um, so after that. You know, uh, we're talking about March and people are kind of like, hmm, like, well, what, what do we do? And then, uh, you know, I'm I'm at the point where I'm at a at a neurosurgeon uh, appointment, you know, probably about a week after this, uh, not knowing if I needed to wear a mask or not, because it's my first my neurosurgeon appointment. And we didn't um, because there was no need for that at that time. Um, also had an appointment with the um, for my follow up to fi find out what was going on with me. They found nothing. Uh, ironically enough, they found nothing. They couldn't figure it out. Uh, at the time, he made me wear a mask in his doctor's office because I didn't have a fever. I had like a, like a little bit of a cough or something, and uh, and it wasn't a bad cough. It was in a little bit of cough and a little bit of sniffles. And uh, they said we don't want to take any risks. Put on the, put on a surgical mask. Here you go. Um, I'm like, all right, whatever. Uh, so so they made me put that on. Uh, they didn't find anything. I asked to go, do you think this is COVID? Can you test me for that? I don't know. I don't know what they're doing here. And, uh, he says, well, because you don't have the symptoms of COVID of like, you know, a high grade fever or, or like a deep cough or anything like that. No, they won't test it because at the time they didn't want people being tested for COVID. Um, so I don't know if I ever had COVID or not. Maybe I did, maybe. And I, you know, it took about a month and a half to clear. I don't know. I still don't know if it's chiropractor thing that was doing it to me. I don't know. Um, I guess I'll know in due time. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, obviously I'll find out one day I'll find out. Um, so yeah, so we went ahead and, and, uh, I think at the time we was like, kind of like, well, now we're getting into April and 
don't remember if, if when, when was Easter. Let me look and see when Easter was. I'm actually curious. When was Easter 2020? Um, because I remember I was going to I every week I was you know, just to get out of the house. Um, when was Easter 2020? April 12th. I thought it was April 12th. Yeah. Um, every, every, uh, you know, I, I was going out of the house. I was going to my local supermarket every weekend. Um, even maybe even uh, every other day because I needed to get out of the house. Um, I'm working from home at this point in time. Uh, I was already working from home from January because the last time I was in the office was probably about January, 2020. And my neck just could not handle the drive. You know, my, my arms and were getting so weak and, and my neck was just mm, crushing down on me and stuff like that. Um, it was really bad. Uh, so uh, so yeah, it was, it was January, 2020, the last time I was in the office, but, uh, at the time, you know, they didn't really make any major announcements about, you know, okay, people need to work from home. I think until about maybe mid or, or, or end of April, where they said, you know, everyone's going to have to come and clean out all their desks and, uh, and take everything home. Um, actually they didn't even do that yet. They, they said everyone's working from home until further notice is the first thing they said. I was happy because I was already working remote and I, to me, I'm going to be honest with you. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be hundred percent honest with you. Um, working remote is the way to go for me. I'm going to say for me, because a lot of people cannot work remote. They have too many distractions. They have too many things going on at home. Uh, for me though, uh, as a person that doesn't have a lot of that, um, it's really a blessing for me because if I'm in the office, I'm distracted too much and I'm not paying attention to my work and my work's getting done slower. And I don't have enough time. And then I got to battle the traffic, which is another thing. Um, uh, I'll get to that in a minute, actually, too. But and, but but then, you know, I'm killing about three hours of my day with traffic alone, right? So that's about three hours right there. Um, working from home, hey, I'm up at 7, 7.30 in the morning, get get started my work. I'm on until about 5, 30, 6 o'clock finishing my work. And I don't have to go do or do anything. And I get so much work during, done during a day. Uh, I can focus. I can do things. Um you know, it's just amazing. Uh, it, to me, at least it's amazing. I can, you know, I don't, I don't have any distractions if I need to. And, and that's just the other thing because I had my neck issues because you guys have seen my previous YouTube because I had neck issues and, and the surgery. If I need to lie down for like five minutes, I can, as opposed to suffering through sitting in, in, in a desk eight hours or trying to get up and walk around, which has been very impossible for me to do, uh, you know, at the offices because, you know, now I got to worry about driving home and, you know, having a weakness and getting into an accident and stuff like that. Not, not a fun situation, but you know, for me working from home, uh, it's the way to go. And, and if I can do this, you know, uh, yeah, I, and I don't want to say if I can do this permanently because at some point in time, you know, if I have to go into an office and, and I'm feeling 100% or close to 100%, I'd love to, um, if I had to, but you know, do this way though, gives me the most amount of flexibility, first of all, and the most amount of time for myself. Um, so I'll, I'm going to leave it at that with that. But at the time, they didn't tell everyone, you know, it's permanent yet. They just said it's until further notice. So we're talking about April and, you know, I'm going to the food stores and, you know, at the time, they're not even talking about wearing masks at the time. And, uh, you know, about you know, end of March, middle of April. And uh, my friend, you know, he, you know, he thinks that he got COVID from that first one that got COVID. He thought he got it from the food store that I was going at. And, you know, that, that was the thing that everyone was trying to figure out where to get COVID from, if they were getting COVID. Was it a quick check? Was it a, was it a food store? Was it a gas station? Was it a coffee shop? You know, no one, you know, things that were, things that were still open a little bit at the time, uh, mostly for takeout, right? So, so we can, we can, you know, here's, here's a perfect example, takeout coffee, right? So here's a takeout coffee. Um, and you can walk in a store, take your coffee and leave. Um, uh, so the stores that were open, that, that were still, you know, pretty good. There was a couple of, uh, couple of takeout restaurants, like for example, like a Five Guys Burgers or, or maybe a local place that does just takeout only. You don't have to sit inside or, um, or a Dunkin Donuts or, or a McDonald's, which will, which allowed the drive through. Right. So that was okay. The two, uh, stuff like that was still okay to, to deal with, but there wasn't a lot open and food stores were open. So, um, it was really strange because what was happening was at first there was nobody in the food stores. Like I was going there, there was nobody in there and, and, you know, and my friends were afraid to even walk into the food store. They were afraid to walk out of their houses. That's how bad it was. They were afraid to walk in the food store. So I had at least one friend call me and say, Hey, um, I can't get this ordered or, you know, because I typically get this ordered and I, can't, I don't want to go to the food store and pick this up. 
uh, if you're at the food store, can you get me this? I'll pay you and just drop it off. So I was doing that. I was like, cool, let me take that and drop it off. Um, but what was happening was they were starting to ration things a little bit more after that because they didn't know what was happening with this pandemic. And I would say it was probably about, it was right before the masks started hitting, uh, the, the need to wear the mask. So I remember going into these stores and people weren't wearing the masks or anything like that, you know, they, cause they didn't make it mandatory probably about maybe about third week in April. So, uh, you know, but again, food store. So, uh, you know, so it's, you know, about third week of April or so people weren't wearing masks and, uh, and you know, they still until about that time, but they were going to food store and they said, Hey, you had a limitation of water. You had a limitation on your Lysol wipe. You had a limitation on, uh, any hand sanitizers. You had a limitation on, on this. And the funny thing is like, they were putting limitations on stuff, but people were buying the weirdest things like toilet paper. Like they were buying out toilet. Like we don't know why they were buying out the toilet paper. I still don't understand that to this day. So you would go into the food store and it would be completely empty. Funny enough, before all this happened, I bought a bunch of stuff because I was anticipating that I just was going to need stuff for a long time. Uh, so I left it alone and I said, ah, I'm, I'm like, I'm going to just leave this for a long time in case they close down the, uh, you know, in case they close down the food stores. But this was before the mass lines started happening. So what was happening was they were putting, you know, these people were going in there and they, there was a mass line, you know, every aisle had a huge line of people um, waiting, like stacked, their, their food carts were stacked up to who knows what, right? Um, so I'm like, wow, I'm like, this is insane. I'm like, I didn't think it was going to be this bad. Uh, I remember Easter time was, was right, right. This was right after Easter time was starting to come back. Easter time was around the time, you know, that they were anticipating things were going to start going back to normal and they wouldn't. Um, so Easter time happened to be, uh, my birthday weekend too, uh, that weekend. So, so it was my birthday and Easter and my birthday, um, was a zoom birthday party because that's all there was to do. Like nobody wanted to see each other. We couldn't go out and, and celebrate my birthday the way I wanted to do it. Um, I should, I didn't do my birthday again this week, this year, because while I could have, I still was struggling through a lot. And I said, I said, you know, I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm like, anyone that needs to do anything for my birthday, they can, I don't care this, this year. I just didn't care. I just didn't care. I just didn't care to make anything happen. I was going through a hard time physically, which led to a hard time mentally. And still to this day is a little bit bad. Um, hopefully this physical situation will fix itself, you know, after this week, but we'll see. Um, uh, so, so yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm going here and I'm thinking to myself, wow. I'm like, so, you know, no one was having an Easter celebration. No one wanted to get together. And, you know, my family didn't want to get together. No friends wanted to get together anywhere. Uh, my buddy, you know, he was, he was by himself. I was by myself. I'm like, dude, I'm like, look, we've seen each other a few times. I think we're going to be okay. Um, I don't know if they're making this virus up or not. I don't know what the story is, but do you want to do Easter Sunday? So I went out and got a bunch of stuff for Easter Sunday, made dinner, uh, sorry, made lunch, made a lunch, brought it over to his house. We had like an Easter lunch and uh, that was it. I mean, it was pretty much my Easter is that, you know, he gave me like a gift for my birthday. Um, you know, I think my fam, my, my dad and stepmom stopped by and gave me a gift for my birthday too. Um, but that was really it. You know, it was like, okay. So at that point, you know, we're, we're going, uh, so, you know, from March to about April, May ish time, it was very cool, very quiet outside. I mean, it's so quiet. There were no planes up in the air. First of all, that would, that was that to, and it's still to this day, it's, it's still quiet enough that I don't see a lot of planes. Right. Um, there were hardly any cars on the road, like hardly any cars on the road. It, it, that, that, those first few weeks after after the shutdown, there were a lot of cars, you know, after 10 o'clock curfew the night, you know, I drove home. Um, but, uh, but after that, you know, those first few weeks, there was hardly anything. Like, I'm like, wow. I'm like, this is like insane. I'm like, there's no cars on the road right now. This is insane. And I've never seen this like this with no cars in the road. Um, I am, I was speechless. Like I, I go into like a Dunkin' Donuts just to get a quick coffee or something. Right. And that Dunkin' was empty. Like I, I was the only person there. It was just ridiculously empty. Um, fine. Cool. Great. Um, so yeah. So then we, you know, we're going back there and, and you know, I'm going back there, uh, every day and, no masks, no nothing. Then about mid-April, they start talking about, well, people are going to have to start wearing masks and this and that and that. Right. So they people started wearing masks going out and around. Um, 
I remember even just walking outside, uh, seeing all the cars parked on my block. First of all, because of all the people that were home, right? Uh, people were losing their jobs. I mean, that, that was that was kind of the other thing. People they didn't know what to do, uh, so people were losing their jobs at the time, and and that was you know people that couldn't work remote, uh, you know that that were in restaurants and and physical businesses, you know that they had to work physical jobs that they and they had to work in physical businesses. They were losing their jobs because they didn't know what was happening with this COVID thing. Um, so so it was a shame seeing that because you know i don't know how many people around here were affected i just know that, that the close people that live around me were were also were not that bad uh, but yeah at the time you know i didn't know what to do and and you know i was like wow am i just gonna walk around outside and just see how it is and it was it was pretty empty outside there weren't a lot of people walking around i see a lot of neighbors that i never would see you know outside hanging out and stuff like that which wasn't a bad thing um, we were still doing like a lot of Zoom stuff too, like at, at, in the evenings, like Zoom trivias and and Zoom parties and stuff like that. You know, we had a we had a, a friend of ours uh, battle out uh, breast cancer. We did a thing for her as well on the on the Zoom call. Um, so it was it was really cool that you know they did that. Um, uh, so we did a Zoom Zoom call. Plus, they had a couple people go over to her uh, because not not every they didn't want to expose her to a lot of people. You know, they were they were at the point in time and about April, May, where they didn't know what to do when they were like, well, we're going to start putting limitations on things now. Like, for example, if you're going to be gathering, we don't want to you know, have too many people gather together. I think it was about, and at the time, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, you know, at the time also talking about a surgery and I couldn't get my surgery done in, in May because they said, no, no surgery is being done because the hospitals are overwhelmed and they can't put anyone in the surgical unit. Um, so, so at the time, you know, it was like, I was like, wow, I'm like, this sucks. I'm like, you know, hopefully they can. And they said, they said the only way to be able to do it was an emergency. So for me, it wasn't an emergency just yet, but it was about to become an emergency, right? Uh, but, you know, I, I'm looking I'm looking back at, at some of the Zoom stuff that I had done. And uh, today was one of the memories that happened to pop up, which is Zoom Music Trivia, which I think was the last one that we ever did. Before we decided, we don't know if we're going to be doing the Zoom stuff anymore. We'll see how it goes. Uh, we didn't want to do it again because, you know, we noticed that some people were cheating on these trivias and stuff like that. So we're kind of like, eh, like we're just doing this for fun, just to, just to see each other and hang out and nothing. Um, so so as as May came around, it was very quiet in May. Uh, they they really were starting to put into put things into place saying, you know, you know, uh, the president at the time was President Trump. Um, he was uh, he was on TV every single day and every single day was something different. He was talking about with the COVID situation. Um, I don't want to get into what he's saying, things that he said, because there'll be lots of arguments. But, uh, you know, there were a lot of things that will be better by Easter or, you know, the, the heat kills the virus will be better. But, we'll, you know, we we'll better in the summer and stuff like that. And, and, you know, we have stuff like that that he was saying. And, uh, you know, uh, and then we'll leave it up to the governors of, the, of each state to decide what to do with their state with the COVID thing. And that kind of that's basically what happened. They left it up to the governor and our governor decided to keep mostly everything shut down. About May time frame, though, some of the restaurants that were closed for about a month and a half or so, uh, maybe two months, were, were starting to reopen up, but like takeout only. Um, they weren't even talking about outdoor dining at the time. They were just saying takeout only. And... Um, uh, so they did takeouts, uh, you know, for example, my favorite Chinese food place closed right at COVID. She opened up like two months later, you know, and they put out like big barriers and stuff like they still have it today, big barriers and stuff like that. They don't want anyone inside the restaurant. Um, uh, but they're doing well. I mean, you know, they're doing well enough. Their business is good because people just like doing a takeout from them anyway, which works out. Um, what became huge, I think the two things that became huge at this time were, were, um, Definitely Zoom. Zoom was becoming huge because it became a big thing for a lot of businesses. Uh, if you don't have, you know, a virtual thing that you can look at with um, with video, and you wanted that virtual thing with video, Zoom became huge for a lot of businesses. Um, still is probably today for most. Uh, I actually paid for it for about a month just to get my birthday and the trivia's out of the way. And the other thing that became huge started becoming huge. Probably, I want to say more. More towards the summer was like the DoorDashes and and the Grubhubs and all and the Uber Eats and all of them. You know, those are the ones that started becoming really big because they they really started with their okay. We have we can order uh, some sort of delivery while we have to pay a fee. You know, we can have the people deliver our food instead of us risking ourselves and going out to anyone 
just make sure that if they hand you the bag, you're wearing a mask at that time, right? Um, so that became huge, at least in the United States. I don't know how it is in other countries, but you know, other countries were definitely feeling this pandemic as well. I mean, you know, we saw what happened in Italy. We saw what happened. You know, we saw what happened in China first because that's where it happened. Um, and you know, I don't know how they're doing now. Um, but Italy was pretty bad. Other European countries were pretty bad. Uh, I don't know what's going on in Russia. I mean, you know, other, it's a worldwide pandemic and it was getting really bad. Like people like, you know, they were getting second waves really quick and people were dying left and right. Uh, hospitals were being overwhelmed over there. Uh, hospitals were being overwhelmed over here. Uh, but at some point in time, it started slowing down a little bit about mid-May over here in, in the United States. And ironically enough, right about now. So it started, started, you know, slowing down a little bit. And you know, they said, well, we're going to ease these restrictions a little bit. So af after this time, what we're going to do is, you know, we're going to allow you to gather uh, with other folks and and no more than 10 people uh, in, in, you know, gathering. And it would have to be an outside gathering is what they said. Um, so so they they did that. And as soon as they did that, I happened to notice maybe about about a couple weeks later, neighbors were starting to have outside gatherings with folks and they were having little parties and i'm like hmm i'm like if they're starting to do this i'm starting to think to myself while I, while i'm you know want to be safe with my friends i it can't hurt to have and have a little gathering none of my friends were doing it however let me start it off so it's memorial day weekend and no one has any plans no one's going anywhere everything's closed so i'm texting and calling my friends hey guys why don't we, why don't we, why don't we just be a little, you know, try it out and see what happens. You know, I'll, I'll cook us, you know, food or dinners or anything like that. Um, I'll have, have a barbecue outside. We can all hang out outside. You know, if you have to come in the house, use something, that's fine. Don't worry about it. But, um, so I invited people and it was 10 people. It's exactly 10 people I invited. Right. So, well, including myself, 10 people, um, maybe it was nine. I don't know, but, um, and, uh, Everything turned out okay. Everything, and that, that's when that's when a realization came around that for a lot of folks, you know, for for my friends, that well, this COVID thing, while it might be bad, if we're smart and we're safe, you know, we should be okay. Um, so from there on out, you know, I think there was a couple of other gatherings that had occurred as well. Um, ironically enough, between then and August, I had a bad bad situation with my arms where where they completely went tingle, numb, everything like that, lost feeling in them while I'm driving. Um, uh, horrible situation to be in because it, it, you know, I called a neurosurgeon at that time and he says, yeah, he goes, I'm going to consider this urgent now. He goes, it's still up to you whether or not you want to have the surgery, but you can schedule it as quick as you want. Um, so, you know, I, I took a little time to think about that and just schedule it, you know, for, for the end of July at the time. Uh, it definitely is a, wasn't, you know, wasn't considered, um, elective at that point in time it was definitely considered urgent so he had it as an urgent surgery um but you know between then and and the end of july um we had at least two gatherings at, at a friend's house where we had you know because we weren't getting the live music like we wanted to at bars and, and places we had a live music thing um so we went ahead and and hired you know one week was you know one one guy who came by came by did live music and then the other week was another guy that, you know, or you know, for, it was for two friends' birthdays. So we did it in one person's backyard. And then two weeks later was another one with live music as well. Um, and I would say they, they had a decent crowd come on, come on for that time um, uh, for both of them. So I, I was kind of, while at the time, you know, we were also a little reluctant with the COVID thing, we were kind of a little brave saying, well, we'll keep it quiet. Uh, but, you know, obviously her neighbors knew or anything else knew. Um, but it's an outside gathering, so we'll have an outside gathering. And, and it really worked out well for a lot of people. Um, so, um, yeah, at, at that time, it was kind of like, mm, yeah, we have this going on and, and you know, we're okay uh, at this point in time. Uh, I didn't, I think this, the heat in the summer was kind of what killed COVID a little bit more because people were getting less sick, that's for certain. They were going out and they were getting less sick. Um, they also, I would say probably, was it June? Yeah, probably about June, June time frame. There was one, there was either June or July, I don't remember which one it was, but there was one that we went to a, a restaurant that did outdoors, outdoor dining, outdoor seating, you could, but you had to be by your car. So it was like a little car hop thing. They had a, like a concert outside. Uh, it really worked out well for them uh, because they did a lot of business and, and they were happy about it. And I was like, wow, I'm like, this is really good for you guys. Um, 
And that was kind of the first restaurant that we've been, we were all at for a while. Uh, so, you know, uh, what, what was going on, you know, probably around that time, uh, I went and got my surgery in the end of July and, and, you know, people were still coming over at the time because I'm like, well, well, we've been good gathering and stuff like that. Why don't we all just come over and do stuff and, and, you know, whatever. And, and it wasn't that crowded outside too. It was kind of like half, half busy still at that point in time. So it was getting a little half busy for people, uh, but it wasn't as busy. Uh, so, so, you know, no one was getting hit with COVID at the time in the summer. And no one was really getting hit with COVID after the summer either. Um, I went to physical therapy. The physical therapy's offices were were pretty empty until about maybe the last few weeks. So I'm going to say, let me let me go out there. So I'm going to go. September was was about the time I you know maybe October was about the time I started physical therapy at the end at the beginning of October. Um, and I say beginning of October because that's when I started physical therapy and. Um, uh, yeah, September was pretty quiet. You know, there was a lot of bands doing live streams and stuff like that. So we were doing like, hey, why don't we come in August, watch a band for live stream or September, watch a band for live stream. We just get together at somebody's house. Uh, my neck was still a disaster still at this point in time. It still is. Oh, we had an Oktoberfest, we had a, which was probably the biggest event that we had. Uh, it was outside and oh, half outside, half inside, right? But mostly outside. Um, because people had to go in between, you know, between my friend's house and stuff like that. Um, but mostly outside, and it was a, it was a good experience. No one got sick. No one got COVID. Um, no one was wearing masks. You know, at, at the time point in time, it was it was in September. It was still kind of warm outside, but getting starting to get a little chilly. Then I started physical therapy in October. It was a little empty of physical therapy at first. You know, uh, I went to physical therapy for three months. Uh, I remember Halloween. Um, they didn't want people knocking on people's doors and they didn't want people handing candy to kids because they were afraid of COVID that way, right? Um, and then, uh, so so people had ideas, like I had an idea, let me leave the candy outside in little bags, please take one. Uh, all the kids were pretty good about it, please take one. I think I caught one kid maybe taking five bags. What I would do was I would leave, you know, five or six bags out at a time and then if it was empty, I put out another five or six bags. So not a bad idea. And you know, it was on a table, they could see it and such, such like that. Uh, but then, you know, that was October, so November time. No one was really gathering for Thanksgiving or the folks or the folks that were, it was like very close friends and family uh, and just for them and not really huge. Um, and then uh, it was starting to get a little busier because people couldn't go outside. It was a little quiet, but starting to get busier and like, a lot of restaurants were starting to reopen up their inside at this point in time. Uh, so they, they were like, well, let's take a chance. Let's take a chance reopening inside. Uh, they were giving them limitations to how many, you know, 25% or 30% or you know, so whatever. Uh, so most restaurants were doing that. You had to walk inside with a mask until you sat down, you eat your dinner and stuff like that. They weren't allowed to sit at the bars or anything like that. Uh, so restaurants were, were not as busy and not all restaurants opened up. Uh, that was for certain. So, uh, you know, that was probably about end of October, beginning of November time. I would say probably probably about beginning of November time. And then, then I started noticing things. You know, as as you know, schools. You know, this is another thing I want to talk about. Schools were they didn't decide what they want to do. So some of the schools were all virtual. Some of them were half virtual, half in person. They had to decide who was going in person. High schools, grammar schools, middle schools, stuff like that. Right. Um, and, and that was challenging for the parents and especially parents that had to work from home, uh, for them, it's very challenging. So that was a big decision. Um, uh, teachers as well, you know, they had to figure out how to work remotely with these kids and it was not easy because you can't control kids when you're, when you're on your zoom calls. And that's exactly essentially what it was. They're trying to teach them on a zoom call and the kids aren't, you know, some of the kids aren't listening or they're distracted by other things. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that was a little challenging. Then I would say. It, it, you know, people at this point in time, I'm not hearing about a lot of people, at least I knew that were getting COVID and then the spikes weren't going back up again. Uh, November came around and, and it was election time too. Uh, I'm not going to get into the election because this is not a political thing, right? I mean, uh, so I don't want to talk about that. You know, um, if I were to talk about it, you know, I'll give you my thoughts as well Is that uh, while I am disappointed that we could not vote in person, I was also happy that I can drop off the ballot as well and just put it into a thing and then, you know, 
vote that way um because you know pretty much it's the same thing you know what are you doing you're going in there and you're pressing a button or whatever uh you're just filling out a ballot and dropping it off it's the same thing it's going to count one way or another um and they do it in other countries they do it in other places uh so you know but election time that happened and then um uh, you know it, it was a big mess at that point in time and COVID started going up a little bit more again after the election i mean that's the thought everyone was thinking that Everyone's thinking like COVID is just magically going to go away after the once the election comes and after the election, right? So that's what they were trying to say. Um, December came around. And I remember December time, they were talking about the vaccines and, and you know, um, they were saying, okay, we got these vaccines here for COVID. Um, you know, we don't know how we're going to distribute them yet. We don't know uh, what we're going to be doing, who's going to be qualified for the vaccines, you know, how these vaccines are going to work. They really didn't have anything. They're doing a lot of tests. Um, I actually had a party, a New Year's Eve party on, in December, um, which was great because I had a good amount of people. I would say, you know, we still weren't allowed more than, more than 10 people, but I would say I probably had just a tad bit over 10 people show up uh, in my house. It was pretty packed. Uh, no masks. Every, no one wanted to wear a mask. I had a few friends that recovered from COVID the week before. Um, they were they came back COVID negative, thankfully. Um, I had a few friends that were, um, you know, that that were sick and didn't show up to the party, and apparently they had COVID. Uh, so I was like, wow. They said, yeah, apparently somebody had a party, had COVID, even though they knew they had COVID, had the party anyway, and got everyone sick at their party. Um, so you know, my my thought was, hey, if you have COVID, if you have any symptoms stay away don't come over i don't want you over my house please don't risk it please don't put others at risk you know um if you want to wear a mask the entire time at the party you're more than welcome to uh you know that's what i said i go you know if you if you don't feel comfortable wearing a mask that's fine too you know it's my own home so more than likely i'm not going to wear a mask if i have people over i trust that everyone's going to be okay um thankfully no one got COVID at the time uh at the party um uh, so, but yeah, I found out a couple other people who had COVID and stuff like that. So yeah, it was about December time. Then, then January time, you know, things started happening more with politics and stuff like that. And then, you know, the president changed and now we got president Biden. Um, president Biden is now, uh, you know, he's ramping up the, the code, the COVID vaccine stuff, uh, over time. Um, and I, as I'm seeing that happen, what I'm seeing is starting in January, wasn't maybe starting January, probably about, probably about February or March time. I want to say that I'm starting. To, I'm starting to see more people go out. So, like, yeah, probably about March time, March time or so. I'm starting to see more people go outside. Uh, you know, into into restaurants. I'm starting to see more people go into a Dunkin' Donuts. So, for example, if I went to a Dunkin' Donuts at that time one year ago, and I'm the only person there, now if I went into a Dunkin' Donuts, guess what was happening? What was happening was that. Well, I'm the only person. I'm not the only person there anymore. There, there could potentially be a line out the door uh, to get into Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, they did space things out so this way people are six feet apart. They made you know made sure everyone's required to wear a mask regardless of where you are. A lot of businesses started reopening at that point in time. The favorite restaurant that I liked going to reopened in March. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people still are home, like myself. Uh, so yeah, that's what they told us. Probably about September time. They, they said, they told a lot of people, oh, come into the office. You have a designated time to come into the office and gather all your belongings. We're basically no, no longer going to have offices. We're all going to be remote. Um, I was thrilled because I love working remote. Um, I'm hoping that that never changes. I'm hoping to never put an office back in place for us uh, because I will definitely 100% ask to work remote going forward. Um, I'm more than happy working remote. It's very great. Uh, but um yeah uh so and you know I, I remember that time i was like i said i honestly i don't have any personal belongings in that office anything that belongs anything that's there belongs to the company you guys can keep it uh, it's as simple as that that's what i told him i said so i you know i'm having a hard time anyway because i just went through surgery so i really can't make it um so you know they said okay don't worry about it no problem and they just left it alone um so you know i i'm i'm at a point where where things are starting to ramp up a little bit more, and they just recently they just lifted all restrictions. Um, this is where where it's going to be very telling to know a couple things. Um, did the vaccines work for for a lot of the folks that got the vaccines? That's the first thing that's going to be telling because um, not everyone's vaccinated. Uh, people got people get vaccinated. A lot of people did get vaccinated. You know, a lot of people didn't. Um, so it's just simple as that. Uh, but it's, it'll be a telling, telling trial because the people that got vaccinated, the goal for the vaccines is not to 
make you immune to COVID. It, there's, it does not say the vaccines or did not tell you, did not come back and say, if you get the vaccine, you will never get COVID again. Not true. You could still have COVID. You just may not have the symptoms. Um, and that's kind of what they were talking about there. They were, they were trying to, you know, they try to make that point. So that's why a lot of people aren't getting the vaccines. It has nothing to do with the, it's, you know, I, I know there's a lot of people saying that, oh, we don't know what's in the vaccines or it's not FDA approved or this and that and that. I, I honestly don't think, or, you know, or it's got a microchip in it or something like that. No, there's, there's, you know, I, I don't. I don't believe that's the reason why people are not getting it or it's, they think it's a political move so they're not getting it. You know, it, it, I don't think there's a reason why they're not getting it. I mean, maybe some people are not getting it for those reasons, right? Uh, I think the big reason why they're not getting it is because there's no guarantee. Uh, there's no guarantee that you're not going to get COVID. You might get the vaccine. You might get the one shot. You might get the two shots. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what you guys got. Um, but it, 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 it the point is that the vaccine did not say, does not say to anybody, if you get the vaccine, you will never get COVID again. They also don't know if you're going to need a booster. They also don't know if you're going to need an annual shot. That's the, those are the things that are driving people away from the vaccines. And, you know, if they, if they tell, I'm sure if they told people, if you got the COVID shot, you will never get COVID again. You will be absolutely immune to it. Like, uh, like you are to, I guess, you know, you'll, you'll develop all the antibodies. And some people do develop the antibodies. So let's, let's be honest with you. Um, you'll develop, I did take an antibody test, by the way, uh, way back earlier in COVID times, and there was negative. I, I don't know if it's, I don't know if I have antibodies here or not. Uh, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you unless I took a test, right? Um, so I think I was like in May time frame. I took May 2020, I took it. I did not have antibodies. So uh, you know, it tells me that I probably didn't have COVID or maybe I did, my body cleared it and it didn't develop antibodies. But, you know, and then there's medical reasons, you know, people couldn't take COVID, couldn't take the COVID vaccine for medical reasons because it could worsen their other medical conditions. That's the other piece that they're also worried about. Um, uh, so, so these are, but, but I think the bigger part is, you know, they're coming back and saying, well, you know, it doesn't guarantee I don't get COVID and how do I know, you know, I'm not going to spread it to somebody who didn't have the vaccine. And, uh, you know, even if they have the vaccine, I still might spread it to them, but, you know, maybe they're, maybe they spread it to somebody else that couldn't get the vaccine. Um, and that's the problem. So now, and, and because you're asymptomatic, cause that's kind of what the goal of the vaccine is to give you asymptomatic is, you know, that could, that could be a major issue. Uh, in, in my opinion, what's probably happening is a lot of these folks are getting the vaccines. They're not getting sick because they're not getting sick. They're not getting tested. So it looks like there's less people with COVID, even though they might be walking around with COVID and we don't know it. Um, but as the vaccines ramped up, as the vaccines definitely ramped up, so did everything outside. And I mean, ramped up tremendously. Um, you know, they, they uh, back earlier in 2020, they they closed down a lot of the parks, uh, the state parks and stuff like that, right? That was a big thing. I didn't understand that one because it was all outside. Uh, but they didn't want people gathering. And then they, then they reopened the parks almost like a month and a half later. And there's tons of people without masks out there all gathering. No one was social distancing that. Um, but uh, now that I look at it, you know, as our vaccines ramped up and as, as it's getting nicer outside, because it's pretty nice outside, uh, people are going outside and being more brave again because that's how it is. You know, hey, I got the vaccine. I can go outside. But you were doing that last year without the vaccine and people and you weren't getting sick last year. So it was like, mm, it's like, they just feel, you know, just, just a sense of, of, I, I'm not, first of all, I'm not going to tell you that I'm against or, or for the vaccines. I won't tell you that. Um, if, if, like I said, if they told people this would co this vaccine would prevent you from ever getting COVID, not just the symptoms, but would prevent you from ever getting COVID, like you don't get, like if you had the polio vaccine or the mumps or rubella and stuff like that, would, which give you the antibodies, if they, it guaranteed that it gave you the antibodies, I guarantee you more people would be running out there getting the vaccine without a doubt. Um, but, you know, I, I, to me, I'm a fan of vaccines if they if they really do prevent you know, prevent you from getting that or or you know prevent you from getting sick. Um, I, I you know, just 100% honest, just 100% honest with you. Um, you know, it's just the way it is, and uh, you know, it, it's it's the, the touchy subject is is a very touchy subject with vaccines because people are a little uncertain because they felt it's untested right now, and you know, but they try to make the 
try to make the argument that, oh, it's been tested for, you know, thousands of, uh, you know, thousands of people. Well, thousands of people doesn't mean anything because you have, you know, millions, billions of people in the world. Uh, so, so, you know, and there's other countries that would kill to have the vaccines. Um, but anyway, uh, onto my point, as people are getting the vaccines, uh, as it's getting nice or outside, uh, people are getting more brave to go outside. They're starting to go to restaurants. Uh, COVID cases are definitely going less because people, less people are getting tested. And the hospitals aren't as crazy, at least not in, not in most states, though, though some states are. Uh, there've been some states that just opened up completely like Texas, you know, that's, that's a state that just opened up completely. Um, Florida really never, never really did any sort of major lockdowns. Uh, but uh, yeah, Mm, you know, and then now suddenly restaurants are starting, you know, they've lifted all restrictions. Restaurants, hey, open them up, open them up. Uh, you know, uh, you still have to come in with the mask on. You vaccine or not, you still have to come in with the mask on because they're afraid that you can still spread COVID. So it's like, you know, this, this is such a touchy subject to a lot of folks, you know, and and if you if you want to get the vaccine, hey, go go ahead, go get the vaccine. If you if it thinks that, if you think that it's going to make you better and, and make it, so so you're not getting the, you're not getting COVID. Great. If you don't want to get the vaccine, that's your choice too, right? That is your choice too. If you don't want to get the vaccine, just realize that you might be putting, you know, uh, yourself a little bit more risk at that point in time too. And and you know, it's up to you whether you want the vaccine or not. Uh, so you know, uh, you know, I more recently, I think I've had two friends that got COVID. One was in the hospital, uh, but they were going out to bars. You know, they were they were going out to create all these crazy bars and stuff like that. Uh, they went out to you know one. One of them went to like a huge, you know, huge uh, Patrick's St. Patrick's Day celebration where it was pretty packed. And, you know, it was like I, I warned them. I said, this place that you're going to, you know, that that town has pretty much a huge COVID spike going on right now. So if you're going there, just get ready, you know, be smart. And sure enough, came back, you know, a couple of weeks later, had COVID. He didn't, you know, he doesn't know if he got COVID from there. But then another friend that he always hangs out with all the time also got COVID. So it's it's a very very touchy situation uh, with this COVID thing. We don't know, um, but yeah, we're about a year, month, uh, year and a year and a month and a half, uh, pandemic wise. And uh, in the United States, is much better, uh, I'd say, uh, compared to other countries, especially India. Like I said, India is really really bad right now. Uh, but like I said, as people are getting vaccines, they're getting more braver. They're going out, they're doing things. Traffic is insane out there. Um, just just my drive to to a local shop, which is basically what I can do right now. Or even to a doctor's office, which is all I can do right now. Uh, traffic has been insanely bad, and uh, it's a shame because you know I've enjoyed it. I enjoyed it when it was very empty and there weren't a lot of people on the roads because it made me feel a little bit more comfortable at the time. But uh, what can you do? You know, there's not much you can do. And and you know, I come back and say, "Wow, I'm like I got this insane situation, and now I'm here." Um, you know, and people still have to wear masks wherever they go into, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's, it's just, we don't know. We don't know where, where this is going. Uh, interesting enough, they're, they're predicting that by July, there'll be a major decline, especially with the vaccines and especially with the, with the summertime. Ironically enough, that was about the time last year that there was a major decline too. Um, so, so whether this is a summer thing or not, we don't know, but I guess we'll find out probably in in due time uh more than likely probably i say probably about n n october november december time to see what happens with these vaccines to see what happens with covid to see what happens you know is there going to be another spike uh they're talking about different variants that that people are getting uh is there going to be another spike with these different variants are the covid vaccines actually working um are uh you know, or or is this just a thing that just is is now? Because uh, they're they're already planning concert tours and stuff like that. You know, there were no concerts, and and a lot of bands are planning concert tours as as things are reopening back up, stadiums and and concert venues and stuff like that. You know, they're all they're all planning it. Um, so you know, is this is this a seasonal thing? You know, we don't know. We don't know if this is a seasonal thing now. Um, we do know where the virus apparently came from. Uh, apparently, it came from China. I mean, that that's that's kind of where the blame was was. Um, at least that's what I'm hearing. Uh, it came from some bat in a lab, apparently in China that, that just, you know, somebody, somebody, but it got it and then traveled and released it. And then it just spread and spread and spread. And that's it. Um, 
Uh, I mean, at least that's what I'm hearing. I, I don't know if that's not true. We don't know where COVID came from. Uh, very touchy subject. I'm sure a lot of people are probably going to comment on this and and argue with me and whatever. You can. That's fine. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna come back and tell you anything. Anything to what I've already said here. Um, you can argue about a politic thing. I don't. Not political at all. As a matter of fact, one of my friends uh, got a little mad at me about the politics uh, in January because you know we had a little bit of a different view on to on, on a subject. Uh, and I never. I never get political at all. Right. Um, but uh, so for me, I'm just like, I'm like, look, I'm like, I don't want to get political and I don't want to, you know, I don't want politics to ruin anyone's friendships and let's move on from it. And the person didn't talk to me for a while. Uh, finally, they just talked to me for a little bit. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, I'm like, I wanted to move on away from the, away from the subject, you know, and, and go on and, you know, continue the friendship. And, you know, they weren't, they weren't happy with what I said. Um, and I was like, wow. Um, but regardless, you know, that, that's how it is, you know, uh, you know, a lot, and a lot of, and a lot of what people think uh, about, about the COVID and COVID vaccines. And, you know, I only basically gave you guys facts and a little bit of opinion, but, um, you know, it, it's more, you know, I'm not going to tell you, like I said, I, my opinion wasn't, you know, get it or don't get it. You know, it's ultimately your choice as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you know, it's ultimately anyone's choice. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, a lot of people are, uh, you know, feel that, that their choice is you have to get it. Um, or a lot of people say, no, no, my choices don't never get it because it's got this and that, you know, and, and that's, you know, and, and that's a political, those, that right there is a political view. And I, I don't like getting into that. You know, I have my own personal choice, whether I got it or not. Um, you know, and, and you know, I'm not going to share that, share any view either way, uh, because I don't want to get into that, but you know, people are, people are definitely, you know, out there and, and it's, and here's the, here's the beauty part about this is that, you know, our, our new president, he, what he wanted to do was, was he wanted to unify the nation. You know, he didn't want to segregate it between this or that, you know, he really wanted to unify the nation, but by making these vaccines available and, and pushing them out as much as he pushed out, I'm just getting a little political here, pushing them out as much as he's been pushing them out, which I'm glad, I'm glad he's pushing them out because it makes it, it makes it available to folks, right? First of all, I'll be glad that he's pushing out. Uh, and, and, and basically making it feel like people are getting forced to get it. Um, the problem is, is now he, while he wanted to unify the nation, he's now segregated us into two groups again. Um, and it's unfortunate that this has happened. Um, and, and, you know, look, ultimately the choice is yours. Ultimately the choice is yours. That's as simple as that. Anyway, I could go on and on, but Political wise, you know, whatever, we'll get through that, that, but yes, um, they're, they're, you know, things are better than they were a year ago. I would say, uh, things are a little bit more open. People are being a little bit more brave, uh, at least in the United States, uh, people are being a little bit more brave. Uh, people are getting out, people are seeing each other more, uh, people are congregating a little bit more into restaurants, bars, uh, each other's homes, um, wherever, man. So there's my experience. Uh, thankfully I, I'm just going to knock on wood. Um, I don't know where my wood is here. Maybe out here, probably down here. <laughs> uh, um, thankfully I've never gotten COVID. I hope that I never get COVID. Um, at least not that I know of, I might've had it uh, and not realizing it could have been asymptomatic. That's a very strong possibility. I remember when I said I got sick earlier on, maybe that was COVID and I did get it. I don't know. Um, but I don't know. Um, I'm hoping I never get it. I'm hoping I never have to get it. And I hope let's leave it at that. So if you guys want to leave a comment, feel free to leave a comment on the video, do whatever. Um, uh, I'll give you guys an update on where we are with the pandemic, maybe in about a year from now. Uh, in the meanwhile, the next few videos that you're going to see from me this week are going to be a little bit different and updates on my next stuff again. Uh, but stay tuned for that probably middle of the week or so. So stay tuned for that. And be safe, everyone. Be smart and just enjoy life and just be good. Right. So take care, everyone.